praise the name of the Lord. We are enjoying God's presence in this worship series. I'm so grateful to God that God has made my job description very easy for me on earth. Now understand that my principal job description on earth is worship. And not just that, but God has made me the CEO of his creation here to also engage other creatures in a, a job description effort by bringing everything that God has created and made even to worship God. What a privilege that God did not only call you or created you for worship, but God has also enabled you to become a manager and a CEO of creation, according to Psalm 8, with the capacity to bring all creation to worship him. Today, we'll be looking at hosting divinity in worship or hosting divinity through worship. Hosting divinity through worship. What does it mean to host? To host means to entertain a guest. That is very special and also a honorable individual. To bless them and also to make sure they feel accepted and they feel well honored. So a host is one who receives guests, treating them as special and blessing them with what they have to make them feel they are very special or they are very unique. Now God is saying that we can host him. And the only way we can host him is when we become hosts in worship and we accept him as such. When God is hosted by our worship, then we make God our guest. Remember, God entered into the house of Abraham in Genesis 18. And Abraham became the host and God became the guest. Abraham gave his best to God. And God left a blessing behind. And not just a blessing, but God brought Abraham into his secrets, into his place of agenda. And God said, shall I hide anything from Abraham, my friend and my servant? So when we learn to host God, there are things God will bring us into. A lot of us are praying that we know the mind of God, we know the will of God, we want God to speak to us, we want to hear God. I want us to understand that hosting God in worship is the most easiest way in getting to the heart and the mind of God. Today, we'll be looking at 1 Chronicles chapter 13, 1 to 14. 1 Chronicles chapter 13, 1 to 14. And you can cross-reference it with 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 5 to 15. Verse 5 to 15. 2 Samuel 6, 5 to 15. We don't read the scriptures, but I want you to take time and read the scriptures and reflect on them. But I want to speak to you from the scripture, from the passage, and we'll see what God wants us to do as men and women who host God through our worship. Worship makes humanity the host and divinity the guest. Worship turns the tables. It is in that place of worship that divinity, God the creator, becomes a guest to his creation, that is man. So when we worship God, we make God a guest, we become the host, we turn the tables. Take note of that. Worship causes divinity to tarry with divinity. It is in worship, God wants to stay. God wants to tarry. God wants to tarry. You know, God comes at certain seasons. In the case of Jacob, the angel of the Lord came to him and the angel of the Lord at a point says, the day is about to break, so let me go. It is in worship that humanity is able to contain divinity up to a point where divinity will, will love to stay. Worship preserves humanity as a guest because divinity provides protective covering. You see, when you become a host, you become a covering to whoever comes under your roof. 
And in Genesis 19, when the angels, two angels of Sodom and Gomorrah, went to destroy the land, they went to the house of Lot. And when the men of the land wanted to defile them, Lot says, you can't do it, for these people are under my cover. Can you imagine? Humanity is providing a covering for divinity. That's what it means. It is in worship that we can have that privilege. That God preserves us, but God allows us to be the covering. Because God comes into your hosting. I want us to consider a few things. In the days of King Saul, according to the passage you are about to look into, King Saul did not make any connection with the presence of God through worship. The ark of God had been seized. Saul never went after the ark because God, Saul did not understand worship as a king. So David came on the scene and David chose to connect to the throne or to the ark of God, which is the manifest presence of God through worship. In the course of the worship, something went wrong. But that did not prevent David from doing what he desired to do, to worship God. Because that is what he desired to do. In that cause, Uzzah became a victim in worship because he never understood the protocols that had to be kept. Then finally, the presence of God visited the house of a man who was a worshiper, even though he may considered an outsider, Obed Edom. Obed Edom. Now let's look at the passage and glean it quickly. We are going to look at this message in part one and part two. In part one and part two, hosting divinity through worship. Number one, verse one and two, make it so clear. Love sets the tone for us to host God in worship. Love sets the tone. Sets the tone. The Bible said that David gathered together all Israel. The meaning of David means the beloved. The name of David means the loved one, the beloved one. So it, it gives us the understanding that for us to be able to host God in worship, we must create an ambience of love. So loving God, loving other people, sets the tone for humanity to host God in worship. In other words, God dwells in the, in the atmosphere of worship. Jesus said, if ye love one another, then the whole world will know that ye are my true disciples. So love sets the tone for humanity to host God in worship. For us to host God in worship, we've got to be men and women of love. We've got to love God with all our heart, our might, our strength, our energy. And we've got to love one another as Jesus Christ has prescribed in the scriptures. Number two. We'll see that in verses three and verses four. And cross-reference it with First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. First Chronicles 15, 13. Proper worship requires proper order. Proper worship requires proper order. The Bible says that David was burdened to restore worship to the nation Israel as their leader and their king. David understood that without proper worship, he will not be able to properly effect or deploy his leadership to his people. So David went for the ark. On the way from where the ark was coming from, the Bible said something happened and there was a casualty. In worship, sometimes there can be casualties. In worship, Sometimes there can be casualties. If you are not very careful, if you are not very sensitive, if you are not very cautious, there will be. But the reason for which there was a casualty, which was death, that hit user, the Bible said in 1 Chronicles 15 verse 3, that the people did not, the people did not sought the ark of God, the manifest presence, they did not go about worship in the proper order. Today, a lot of us have become so disorderly when it comes to worship and praise of our God. Our worship times, our worship programs, we have become so disorderly when it comes to worship. 
our obedience is disorderly our work with god is disorderly and when that happens there'll be casualty so proper worship requires proper order if indeed we want to worship god walk with him and worship him with our life then our lives must be ordered today we follow all the various protocols that have been set for us by doctors and by the leaders of nations and by leaders of institutions we follow the protocols religiously because we want to be obedient to our leaders and we do not want to become casualties in the same way in worship for worship to be proper we need to follow the proper order of worship god should be the focus we must follow the requirements and the demands of god say here O israel what does the lord your god require of you but to fear him but to obey him but to love him but to walk with him in righteousness so we need to understand number three number three we can see that in verses three to four our vocation will suffer when our worship go go amiss david had a vocation to be the president of israel and worship went wrong and that affected a lot of things including david's attitude so our vocation will suffer when our worship go amiss so you can be a doctor you can be a medical person you can be a media person you can be a pastor you can be in any vocation you choose to be in once your vocation your work and what you do is not seen as a worship to god that vocation will end up suffering when you know that what you do is worship to god you will do it with all the excellence you will do it with all the passion you do it with all the drive you do it with all the love and the respect that is required finally corporate worship requires corporate involvement which releases corporate power let me repeat that verses five to six corporate worship requires corporate involvement which releases corporate power david had to appeal to the leaders of israel and all those who matter in the land because david could not worship god alone yes even though worship begins from our individual levels but worship must be dynamic flow into every fabric of our lives and every fabric of our society so david gathered all the people to himself and moved them to the point of believing that all of them must be involved to bring back the throne of god to the land today i want to assure you that god wants all of us to put our strength our love our worship together in order to restore back god and the lord in our nation our nations need the manifest presence our marriages need the manifest presence of god everything about us need god's glory god's presence and god's power we need to put our forces and our efforts together in order for this to happen and god bless you as you hear this message and as you apply the principles that comes out of the scripture every now and then may the lord god even cause us to be men and women who will change our world by hosting god and bringing god into the equation any day any time of our lives pastor shambles in glory abbe always bringing you this mega breath devotional from the mega breath altar i want you to know that we are coming again and we'll, we'll, we'll worship and fellowship one more time in this worship series with another mega breath message on worship god bless you i love you shalom amen <music>